and engaging with you. I think the, uh, I like the term baptizing philosophy, but I think we need to narrow the scope, right? Because philosophy has been in dialogue with, you know, Christianity, the scholastics, you know, from time immemorial. What is new is the, I think the popularization and the translation, a lot of orthodox material um, into English, which is something that's new. A lot of the thinkers uh, from what I've read is uh, Heidegger, Lacan, Deleuze, all of these folks have not engaged almost at all from what I've seen from any kind of real orthodox mystic theological material. Uh, and, and in starting to think of these two systems together and starting to put them in dialogue, I've seen, and I know you've seen, and I've seen a lot of people pay attention and you know their attention is kind of focused on this area of these ideas that converge that you wouldn't think secular, psychoanalytic, philosophical, structural, uh, you know, th theories and ideas with the kind of fundamental traditional orthodox Christian ethic, right? So we got, I think we got to discern when we say that we're putting philosophy in dialogue with Christianity. This is a certain type of Christianity that is now available through these writings of the saints and the fathers. That is, is something, it's almost, you know, always put it in a different category, you know, um, maybe, maybe not, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like orthodoxy is a living tradition um, and it's we shouldn't be afraid of philosophy and whatever truth the philosophers, modern philosophers, specifically for our context, whatever truth they get to, if it is true that the orthodox Christian faith is the truth, uh, the capital T truth, the universal truth, it means that whatever particular truths other um, philosophical systems arrive at, they can be situated within the orthodox worldview. And that, I think, is really the essence of baptizing philosophy, um, at least the way we do it, because what we're, we're not simply doing some sort of uh, very superficial ecumenism, whatever you want to call it, where we're just like sort of... Uh, we're sort of just uh, comparing and contrasting ideas in the sense of, okay, we believe this and you believe this, it's actually more of a radical claim that there are um, there are convergences that actually point to the truth of Christianity. Now, that doesn't mean also that we're just evangelizing, and it's not that we're just here to critique uh, philosophical systems and to um, and to just assert our worldview. And it's actually, it's actually more nuanced than that because. It's not simply that we need to take our worldview and replace it with another worldview. It's that, as I as I said, whatever other worldviews, uh, whatever truth they have, and in every single worldview, there has to be elements of the truth. Unless you're talking about like the worldview of Satan himself, there has to be an element of truth in every worldview, so that whatever they get at can be situated within the Orthodox worldview, and can be um, actually. Um, it, it can actually be explained even more coherently and even more beautifully. So they will become coherent and that will fractally respond outwards or it won't, right? Maybe this whole system that we're putting forth here or, or interpolating, maybe it's just another big other. Maybe it's meant to cover up the real. Let's talk about it. Help us point to where there's some contradictions here from a Lacanian perspective, from whatever. It's okay. Let's talk about them. Let's look at them. You know, mm -hmm. so it's not about, hey, we found the solution here. No, it's about let's look at it, you know, in good faith through a dialogical, you know, this communal sense of not trying to be right, not trying to prove one's point, but trying to explore a landscape of a potential, you know, uh, potential exploration of the ultimate question about the world and ourself in it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, I think that's a great way to end because that that's really the essence of what we're doing here. That's the purpose of this podcast. That's the purpose of our baptizing philosophy project as a whole. It's like I, I think what's what's really missing and, and the reason why there is this division between uh, theology and philosophy, very much an artificial division if you actually look back in history, um, it, it's because of a misunderstanding. And I think um, uh, we're not and, – and I think what we're saying is – it's not just the fault of the other, right? It's not just the fault of the philosophy guys. It's also it's also our fault, and it's our fault to truly not live up to the the tradition, uh, our own tradition of engaging with philosophy and taking insights from from philosophy. So I think we need to avoid um, any reactionary 
I ideas where we try to um uh, we can't explore new territory because as um George Flor Florovsky says a very um very important uh theologian of the uh previous century he said this in his Actually, no, it wasn't Flarsky. It was Saint Sophroni. Saint Sophroni of of Essex, uh, Essex, uh, talking with George Flarsky. He says that us Orthodox Christians, we have the universal truth, or that's our belief. And this is more. This is an appeal not to the philosophy guys. This is an appeal to our guys. We're saying that this is what one of our saints said. He said that we have the truth. We should not be afraid of engaging with and with with other traditions and with other systems and dialoguing with them in a um in a well-intentioned manner that is not just propaganda it's not just evangelization in the way that term has come to be understood